in the last class of in news series we had discussed about two bills which are related to jammu and kashmir and in this class the topic is related to jammu and kashmir which is article 370 why after its abrogation the topic never ended hello everyone welcome to the in news series of drishti is i am ritu and today we are going to discuss about supreme court verdict on article 370 so before moving to the points of discussion first of all we'll have an brief idea about article 370 so it was abrogated in 2019 and after its abrogation also there are so much misconception debates around this article so in this class we will discuss about that why its abrogation is still a controversial issue in the whole nation so moving to the points of discussion part first of all we are going to discuss the news and then we are going to discuss a brief about article 370 then what is the petitioner argument regarding this article 370 to the supreme court then what is the center's argument related to article 370 and then what is the final verdict of supreme court related to this thing then practice question for prelims and mains so moving to the news part so we already know that today supreme court has given its verdict related to article 370 and it has held that article 370 is right and its abrogation is into the constitutional process and the due process has been followed while its abrogation and it has also upheld that the state has been divided into two union territory which is jammu and kashmir and another is ladakh so this topic we are going to cover in today's class so this is the news moving to the next slide next slide is about article 370 so you already know that there was a bench which has been leaded by chief justice of india dy chandrachur under which we have various eminent jurists which is uh, s b i b y gavai then we have surekan justice surekan then we have justice s k call so these are the justices which has comprised a, a bench and they had given a final verdict on article 370 so it's very important to know the constitutional about Uh, the article 370 that when it started and what is the background of article 370 so its background started since 1949 and on october 17 1949 the article 370 was added to the constitution of india so you must remember that this is the pre constitution phase so when our constitution enacted and adopted so it was adopted in 26 november 1949 so it was the pre constitution phase and uh, it was added to the indian constitution which exempted jammu and kashmir uh, permitting it to the own constitution it means that what article 370 says that that jammu and kashmir should have their own kind of the constitution so it has permitted the state that you should have your own kind of the constitution and who has introduced it so it has been introduced by draft constitution n gopala swami ayanagar as article 306a so it was a part of article 306a and what it basically does so the constitution assembly of jammu and kashmir was empowered to recommend which article should be applied to the jammu and kashmir so uh, it has been designed that the jammu and kashmir should have their own kind of the constitution and they are also empowered that which article should be implemented or imposed on the jammu and kashmir so this is about the article 370 and what uh, the clause 3 about article 370 so the clause 3 of article 70 says that the president of india has power to amend its provision uh, and scope so it has given the power to the president of the country that it has power to amend its provision so this is the thing and it has also brought out the article 35a and what article 35a is related to so it is related to the permanent resident status of the jammu and kashmir which was again in the news so article 35a is related to the permanent resident of the jammu and kashmir and this topic will be covered in the in focus by aisha ma'am so kindly visit there and what happened in 2019 so it has been abrogated in 2019 by central government by saying that jammu and kashmir should not have a special status and whatever the article which was imposed and implemented all over the india it should be applied to the jammu and kashmir so it has abrogated the special status of jammu and kashmir so this is the brief about article 370 moving to the next slide which is that what are the petitioner argument re related to the article 370 so there were 23 petitions related to article 370 and overall we have tried to find out that what is their main argument related to the article 370 so the first argument is that temporary provision that became permanent 
so uh, there was a separate constituent assembly in the jammu and kashmir because it has given the power that it can have their own kind of the constitution so in 1951 there was a separate constituent assembly in jammu and kashmir which lasted till 1957 so since then uh, we had this article 370 and uh, when the constituent assembly got dissolved so they had not final word on article 370 that it should be extended or not or it should be as remain so there was no final verdict on it and that's why the provision became permanent and it has been extended till 2019 so they are saying that uh, it was not temporary in nature because it has been operational since 1951 and the constituent assembly has not abrogated it it means that parliament cannot become here constituent assembly and by abrogating this thing parliament has acted as a constituent assembly the second argument is that accession and internal sovereignty so they were saying that jammu and kashmir had not uh, submitted itself as a full sovereignty it has just given its external sovereignty to the union of india unlike the other state which has been merged to the union of india jammu and kashmir has not stated the merger statement it has just signed the instrument of accession so there is a difference between merger uh, submission and there is a difference between instrument and accession and what that instrument and accession so that dealt with only external sovereignty not the internal sovereignty so this is on one of the argument concurrence of the jammu and uh, kashmir government so they had said that they had not asked the people from jammu and kashmir and their government that this uh, thing should be abrogated or not and they had not given the consent from the people of jammu and kashmir so this is another kind of the problem role of the governor and they had said that they had dissolved the legislative assembly of the uh, state and here the role of governor becomes very controversial into this thing and then reorganization downgrading to ut not permissible so earlier you already know that jammu and kashmir has its statehood status but now it has become the union territory and uh, so many petitioner feel that it is an insult to the uh, jammu and kashmir and it has downgraded because earlier it was a state and it has their own kind of federal structure their own kind of people's demand and they were dealing with it and they had downgraded by making in ut and without the consent of the people so they are saying that this is not permissible and nothing to show that article 370 fell so the petitioner also said that uh, when article 370 was in the state there was nothing a uh, very bad example that it has failed so why they have abrogated it so these are the petitioners argument moving towards that what the center has their argument in defense so center has a different kind of argument in their defense the first is due process was followed so petitioner has said that by night and with political motivated intention they have abrogated article 370 from the uh, indian constitution and they had also said that because in 2019 election uh, prime minister narendra modi and the bjp party has made promise to the people of india that they will abrogate article 370 so that's why it was a politically motivated decision and they had not followed the uh, due process of law and they had not followed the consent of jammu and kashmir people but the center is saying that they had followed the due process of law and whatever the decision they have taken they all are in the constitutional manner the second is that sovereignty was surrendered so they had said that sovereignty was surrendered and uh, by signing instrument of accession they had surrendered their sovereignty to the indian state so in that way they had not also harmed the sovereignty of the people and then karan singh proclamation so karan singh was the son of the uh, raja of the jammu and kashmir and there was a proclamation made and the proclamation said that there will be the dissolve of the constituent assembly and all the people of jammu and kashmir will follow uh, the constitutional methods of the all over the india which has been followed by the all the people of india and that proclamation says that whatever the special provisions jammu and kashmir had and whatever manner the jammu and kashmir is working it will be repealed soon so they are also saying that karan singh had made such kind of the proclamation there can't be two constitution so he said that india is a union uh, uh, country and we have this kind of the power that we still follow the federal structure but the union uh, uh, the unitary method and unitary form of india is supremacy and it is in supreme in nature and when there will be the conflict between unitary government and the federal structure the unitary form will be always supersede and they are saying that there can't be the two constitution because we already have one constitution and that constitution should dealt to all over the india 
सो दे आर सेंग दैट दे कांट बी जम्मू एंड कश्मीर कांट बी हैव देयर ओन सेपरेट कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन इट विल बी इनजस्टिस टू द अदर पार्ट्स ऑफ द कंट्री हु आर फॉलोइंग सिंगल कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन एंड देन यू टी टेम्प्रेरी बट रिटर्न ऑफ द स्टेटहुड मे टेक टाइम सो सेंटर इज ऑल्सो सेंग दैट दे स्टिल अग्री दैट यूनियन टेटरी स्टेटस ऑफ जम्मू एंड कश्मीर आर टेम्प्रेरी इन नेचर एंड दे आर ट्राइंग टू रिजोल्व फ्यू इशूज इन जम्मू एंड कश्मीर एंड वेन दैट नेशनल सिक्योरिटी इशूज विल रिजोल्व टेरिज्म काइंड ऑफ प्रॉब्लम विल रिजोल्व सो बाय रिजोल्विंग ऑल दिस प्रॉब्लम दे विल रिटर्न द स्टेटहुड टू द पीपल ऑफ जम्मू एंड कश्मीर सो दीज आर द सेंटर्स आर्गुमेंट एंड वी ऑलरेडी डिस्कस दैट वॉट इज द पेटिशनर आर्गुमेंट आफ्टर लिस्निंग ऑल दिस आर्गुमेंट वॉट सुप्रीम कोर्ट हैज टेकन द डिसीजन सो दिस इज द फाइनल वर्डिक ऑफ द सुप्रीम कोर्ट डिसीजन विच हैज बीन लेड बाई सी जी आई चंद्राचूड एंड वॉट इट से दैट द सुप्रीम कोर्ट हैज अपेल्ड द आर्टिकल थ्री सेवेंटी एंड इट हैज जस्टिफाइज दैट अब्रगेशन वॉज नॉट इलीगल एंड इट हैज नॉट वायोलेटेड एनी कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल नॉर्म्स एंड दे हैड सेड दैट जम्मू एंड कश्मीर हैज नो इंटरनल सवरानिटी जस्ट लाइक द अदर स्टेट इट मीन्स दैट सपोज दैट इफ यू हैव उत्तर प्रदेश बिहार राजस्थान so they had no internal sovereignty when it comes to dealing with the external factor the india will be counted there and they can't have their internal kind of the problems so they are saying that just like the other state jammu and kashmir is also similar and they had also upheld that carving of out of ladakh from jnk so you already know that in 2019 the state has been carved into the two things which is jammu and kashmir and another is ladakh so they had upheld that whatever the carvation done at that time it was legal in nature on the other hand the supreme court has also said that there should be the assembly election in the state and they had given the time period also and it they had asked the center to upheld it by september 30 2024 and they had also observed that jammu and kashmir had become an integral part of the india and uh, under the article 1 of the indian constitution so article 1 says that india that is bharat and it has comprised all the state and union territories of the india and so they had said that just like the other state jammu and kashmir has become the part of the indian constitution moving to the other judgment that other judgment what they have made so they had also made the highlighted the principle of consultation and they had said that it was not required every time while taking such kind of the decisions and this has been abrogated by the president of india so the principle of consultation is not mandatory here just like petitioner had argued that why their consent has been not recorded so supreme court has said that it is not mandatory that principle of consultation should be there and every time uh, whatever the parliament takes decision it cannot be matter of the legal challenge so they had also highlighted and they had also highlighted that article 370 was an interim arrangement and it was temporary in nature and that's why it has been abrogated in 2019 so whatever the center has done and whatever the presidential order has done that was legal and constitutional in nature moving towards to the uh, prelims question and your question is the first statement related to article 370 deals with the special status of jnk then article 35a deals with the resident status of jnk and then article 244 provides autonomous district council with the legislative administrative autonomy here they are asking the correct statement so you have to answer in the comment section moving towards the mains part which is critically examine the constitutional and legal implication of abrogation of article 370 reorganization of jammu and kashmir into two union territories how does it affect the federal structure and special status of a 12th state so what you have to do that first you have to give brief background of article 370 and we already had discussed that it was pre constitutional norm it means that it was a part of the original constitution and what it provides so it provided the special status to jammu and kashmir and then it had permitted jammu and kashmir that they can have their separate constitution and it has also inculcated article 35a which deals with the permanent resident status of jammu and kashmir and then what is the so this is the constitutional aspect and this is the background we have given and then coming to the what is the legal and constitutional implication so uh, we already had discussed because the verdict of supreme court has come 
and in that verdict if supreme court is saying that whatever the uh, subjects and whatever the step has been taken by the central government and president that was legal in nature and that has followed the due process of law and constitutional methods so you cannot write it that that has a constitutional implication that has a legal implication because supreme court has also opined that every time whatever the parliament has takes decision in this regard cannot be a subject of legal matter and the principle of consultation is not required in this matter because they had right to reorganize any state rename any state they had also right to alter the boundaries so parliament has done anything in the with the consultation with the constitutional method so this could be the constitutional aspect of the article 370 however it has certain challenges because earlier the state has this statehood status but now it has become to the union territory and jammu and kashmir people have their own kind of uh, the regional problems their own kind of of the concern and by getting the union territory status there might be chances that whatever the concerns they have that are not resolved so uh, but uh, on behalf of it also the central government is saying that statehood would be returned and it would be returned soon once the whatever the challenges happening in jammu and kashmir it will be solved on the other hand supreme court had also advised the central government that there should be the election in the state so that people have their a uh, kind of the say and they can bring their majority they can bring their voice through the electoral method so in that way this is the answer would be the question i hope you like this lecture if you have any query related to this lecture kindly ask in the comment section thank you